Now over here, uh, whole life policies, by the way, caught a lot of flack during the 1970s because interest rates shot up in the late 70s and people were stuck in whole life policies that weren't paying a lot of money. The government actually investigated whole life companies and, 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 and looked into them as to why they were paying such low interest rates to uh, holders of policies. It was then that UL policies came out in the early 80s. Now universal life UL policies are designed to track interest rates. Now think about this, they came out in the 1980s, they tracked interest rates. Where were interest rates? Interest rates were 12, 13, 14, 15, 16%, whatever it was. Uh, so they capitalized on that idea. Uh, the thing I do like about universal life policies is that they're very flexible meaning you can change the premium amounts, there's a minimum that you have to pay to keep it going, there's maximums, the most you can put in there in the course of a year, but they're very flexible and you can change things. You can also change the death benefit. So if you get into a situation that maybe you're a business owner and you bought a policy for a buy-sell agreement, uh, that if something happened to one of your partners, uh, you know, you could buy them out uh, uh, you can buy out the spouse who is now your business partner. We use a lot of buy-sell agreements using life insurance. Um, let's say that, that the company was really going gangbusters, you had a higher death benefit, now all of a sudden economically times are tough. Uh, we can actually take a UL policy and lower the death benefit and change it and restructure it. Whereas with a whole life policy you cannot do that. Again, with the UL policy, it tracks interest rates, and that's, that's uh, what it goes after. Now, the problem is that interest rates, of course, plummeted. So, what happens when interest rates plummet? Where's my little eraser? When interest rates plummet, now all of a sudden there's a cry out for uh, another product. So, interest rates plummeted in the early 2000s to, what, you know, 3%, the minimum of a lot of policies. Uh, so, companies... Uh, came out with variations to this. By the way, during the 1980s and 90s, when the stock market took off, they came out with what they called variable universal life policies. Variable means that it's tied to the stock market. So now you could invest in this life policy and buy mutual funds. I personally think that this is one of the worst ideas you could ever imagine. Why? Because again, why are you buying life insurance? You're buying it to have that death benefit, to also have some guarantees. Now all of a sudden you're putting that money at risk, which I think is a horrible idea. And in fact, we're seeing a lot of people that their policies are blowing up and they're having to pay more money because the values in these accounts dropped. Also, variable universal life policies have some of the highest fees. I call them knick-knack paddywhack fees because they got here a fee, there a fee, everywhere a fee fee. Um, I, I don't like variable universal life policies. Uh, they are actually the one life insurance policy I believe everybody needs to stay away from. But they're sold a lot by brokerage firms. So, go figure it. Now, finally, uh, a product that, that I like in a lot of situations um, whether it's college planning, whether it's buy-sell agreements with business owners, whether, whether it's doctors and lawyers and other high earners that we fund for deferred compensation, uh, that's what they call a uh, uh, equity indexed UL. Equity index means it tracks the market and the UL still gives us the option for tracking interest rates, or we can do a combination. These are called equity indexed ULs. Now the difference is, the part that's tracking the market, you can choose various things like the S&P 400, S&P 500, the European market, the Chinese market, you can choose all these different markets. Your money is not physically in the market. It's just using those items to track your returns. So most of them will have a scenario where you'll get 100% of the returns, up to a cap typically of about 15%. Every company is a little bit different. You have to look at it and evaluate it. But for instance, if you're tracking the European market and the market goes up 10%, you get all 10%. If it goes up 20, 
you only get the cap, which is 15. So this is a neat concept. The nice thing is you know exactly what your return is going to be, whereas with whole life you have no idea. You have to wait till the end of the year to find out, okay, how did the company calculate it, how many people died, you name it. Also with these policies, they're very flexible with what you can do. Now, the final thing I'm gonna tell you is, be very cautious with any of these policies. I only personally in our practice recommend policies that, that have a, uh, uh, a full waiver of surrender charges. Because what happens in these policies is, you know, life happens and things occur and things happen. Uh, I like to have clients and others uh, that can get to that cash. So if you funded a policy with let's say $15,000, in most of these policies, well, term, you know, you're just paying for the life insurance, but whole life, you won't have any, any cash surrender value. Um, because their guarantees are very strong, but they don't have money that's available in the early years of the policies. Variable universal life's the same way, very itchy. Uh, I only really recommend it. I recommend to any of you listening, you really want these policies to have some, some uh, waiver of surrender charges that you can get to this cash when you need it. Uh, those are important things that we look for. There's actually newer products that have just come out that have all of your money accessible. So these are neat concepts, neat products to use in the right ways. You always first fund your retirement items, your Roth, your other items. Uh, that are tax-free, they grow tax-free, but then for enhanced planning for college, enhanced planning for business arrangements, enhanced planning for retirement planning. These are great policies to begin using. By the way, if you have kids in college, check out the video that I shot on college planning to understand how you can use some of these policies to fund uh, college expenses. And also, if you're a business owner, you need to make sure that you have buy-sell arrangements, also succession plans in place. And if you don't have those, give our office a call because we'll show you how, you know, if your spouse uh, all of a sudden, you know, you, you died and your spouse became owner of that company, chances are that they may not want to continue that company. So how can you perpetuate that company without putting it on the auctioning block and, and uh, the, the company dying and all the workers uh, not having jobs anymore. You know, many of you want to have succession plans. Many of you have key employees. These are great options to use life insurance. So I call this life insurance 101 a little primer. If you have any other questions, shoot them at me and I'll answer them uh, for you. It's the financial coach over and out.